He has so far guided 18 embassy and six PhD students. He has successfully handled many NATP and TPT projects. His area of expertise is, is in fungal mycology and his line of interest is in fungal diseases of vegetable and spices, particularly spices. Uh, considering his vast knowledge and contribution towards the field of mycology, the Indian Mycological Society has conferred him the prestigious fellow of Indian Mycological Society back in 2014. He is also recognized as an honorable subject expert and actively is actively associated with different societies and academies. So it is with much pleasure that I present Professor L. Daiho and request him to deliver his lecture on the topic, heat treatment as an important component of integrated disease management. Please take your time, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Ntmer and all for those good words. I don't really deserve also, but okay, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, good morning to everyone. Uh, Dr. Gogoi, I mean, uh, Robin Gogoi, then uh, Dr. Mondo, uh, Professor Antia Marian Au, the Northeastern Zonal President, and Dr. Sushanta Banik, the um, Counselor of this Northeastern Zone of Indian Phytopathology Society. All the Zonal Presidents and Counselors and all the other participants. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to give a talk or a lecture on heat treatment as an important component in integrated disease management. So <clears throat> I welcome all of you with this uh, ginger green tea, which is a uh, good food for health. So all are conscious with our health. So ginger tea is a very good for health. So with this cup of uh, green tea, I welcome to my lecture. So <clears throat> when I started my PhD research way back in 1986, um, those days, gym cultivation used to take place even around our campuses and nearby villages. And so <clears throat> I did my PhD on study of soil microorganisms in Jumlan ecosystem at the uh, Mezutama area. And so during that period, I, when I was uh, preparing this lecture, I was just recollecting, there used to be lots of contaminations due to uh, trichoderma. And now when I uh, proceed with my research work, I came to understand that I came to find that gene, uh, this one, uh, trichoderma population used to get shoot up following the few showers of rain after the June burning. And so that may be related to the increase of presence of trichoderma population or the conidia in the atmosphere. And maybe that is related to the uh, frequent contamination that we come across in the laboratory. And so with that one, uh, something strike my mind when I was preparing this one, that <clears throat> when, in, when we do the partial burning of soil, or for that matter, <clears throat> any substrate on which trichoderma is inoculated, trichoderma colonizes very fast. Uh, and then it establish uh, the prominence, its prominence in the substrate, which we have done, we did the uh, uh, partial sterilization. And so, <clears throat> uh, trichoderma, as I see, was not a very good competitor with other microorganisms for food and for space. But when there is a partial sterilization and when trichoderma entered as the early colonizer in that space, then it establishes very fast and then the population shoots up. And that is why heat treatment, when it is followed with uh, trichoderma application, then that seed or the soil where we did the uh, sterilization and introduced the trichoderma, 
trichoderma uh, perform much better. So with that background, I'm going to present my uh, talk lecture today here. Uh, we start with intro introduction. Heat treatment of seed is an alternative to conventional chemical treatment for elimination of seed-borne pathogens. The beauty of the method is that it is toxic free and eco-friendly. The heat treatment follows a strict time and temperature protocol and is best done with thermostatically controlled water baths. Um, okay, we will be seeing some uh, research work thing. So uh, now with this, I just wanted to say a few words uh, during the Green Revolution started uh, early 60s, 1960s and uh, go up to early part of 1980s. At that time, the main purpose, the main uh, focus was to produce sufficient food grains to feed millions of people. And so for that, uh, <clears throat> hybrid seeds were introduced and to maintain the growth of those uh, hybrid seeds, lots of chemical fertilizers, lots of water, lots of uh, chemical pesticides were used. I mean, that since it was required for uh, producing, uh, to maintain those hybrid seeds variety and also to, uh, to produce maximum food grains. And so <clears throat> lots of chemical pesticides were also involved and because of that, uh, uh, lots of environmental pollution and the harmful effects on the consumers happen. And because of that reason, this integrated disease management has become a very important tool or important uh, method of plant disease management where this heat treatment of seed <clears throat> playing a very important role. Now, the types of heat treatment in use now, I could see this very uh, six important ones. Solar heat treatment, hot water treatment, dry heat treatment, aerated steam treatment, soil solarization, and soil steaming. So let us see this one by one. Solar heat treatment of seed. Solar heat treatment of seed has also been proved to be very effective against loose mud of wheat. This was reported by Lutra, 1941, and Godet et al. 1985 and cover smart of Burley by Bedi 1957. This method is easily practiced and less expensive. The experimental result advocated use of solar heat to exhibit wheat seed borne infections by drying the seeds for 12 hours in mixture with sand and uh, sand under direct solar heat. Now it has been uh, mentioned that they have tried in many different ways, but the seeds mixed with sand exposed for 12 hours was the most effective method of uh, uh, solar heat treatment of seeds. And by that method, the internally seed borne disease also could be uh, managed. Now, this is just a picture showing solar heat treatment of uh, paddy seeds. This picture is from Bangladesh. <clears throat> Someone has done the research, I mean, uh, given this picture. So I'm just incorporating here. This is not necessarily uh, to be used for seed purpose, but this is how the farmers practice of drying the paddy seeds and avoid uh, damage by saprophytic microorganisms. And also the same method is applied for uh, uh, destroying the pathogens, uh, seed borne pathogens also. So this is how solar heat treatment of seed is carried out. Now next is the water, hot water treatment. Here I have shown quite a good number of uh, vegetable seeds and how it is uh, managed. Now for hot, wa hot water treatment, uh, hot water bath, two numbers have been uh, uh, advised to use. In the first one, the water is heated to 37 degrees centigrade and expose the seeds for 10 minutes. After that, the seeds are again transferred to 
the next second hot water bath where the temperature is maintained according to the requirement of the seed. Like for example, for <clears throat> eggplant, spinach, cabbage, tomato at 50 degrees centigrade for 25 minutes. No, 50 min degrees centigrade for 25 minutes. Then carrot and others 50, 20 minutes. And then mustard, crash, grass, radish, 50, min 50 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes like this. Now, this is the hot water bath, the first hot water bath, where the water was, uh, water is heated to uh, 37 degrees centigrade and expose the seed for uh, 10 minutes. This is the second hot water bath used at 50 degrees centigrade or uh, depending on the type of seed used, maybe 51 degrees centigrade or so, or 50 degrees centigrade and exposed for 25 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on the type of seeds. And this is hot water treatment of ginger rhizomes. This is not from India. This is from outside the India. Uh, in India also, I strongly feel that we need to uh, fabricate this type of uh, hot water bath, large size, for management of ginger rhizome road or uh, turmeric. So our farmers, they find it difficult to get disease free seeds from the field. So if this type of hot water bath is there, then we can allow the farmers to bring their seeds and we can help them treating the seeds in this uh, type of uh, hot water bath. Now the second, I mean, next one is dry heat treatment in oven. Now it has been found that the seeds usually in hot water treatment uh, beyond 50, 50 or 52 or 51 degrees centigrade, uh, if we go beyond that temperature, then uh, the seed is also killed. The germinability of the seed is reduced to a great extent. But it has been shown that when the seeds under dry condition is uh, kept at 70 degrees centigrade, even at that temperature also, it is not destroyed under less moisture content condition. So here for dry heat treatment of cucumber seeds at 70 degrees centigrade, exposed for 90 minutes in hot air oven, it was found to eradicate collateral trigum orbicular that induces untracked nose. So this was reported by Yangtze, Shea, Yangtze et al, 2016. Now, yeah, the one which I just said is given here. Sachs in 1865 showed that moistened seeds of ray, barley, corn, peas, and flax were killed at from 50 to 60 degrees centigrade, while those containing less moisture which stood 70 degrees centigrade. So, this is one advantage of dry heat treatment in oven. This is simply showing the hot air oven here and then some seeds. This uh, temperature is controlled and the seeds are treated. Now, aerated uh, steam treatment. This is very good for sugarcane seed, seed set uh, treatment. Um, if the sugarcane seed set is uh, treated at 50 degrees centigrade, exposed for two hours, then the uh, pathogen, like for example, grassy shoot disease, which is uh, mycoplasma disease, uh, that is taken care of. Even uh, red rot of sugarcane, uh, I believe it is also in control with this method. Now this is the device for uh, aerated uh, seed treatment. Now, uh, besides seed treatment. We also have other heat treatment for soil. We have I have taken two here, soil solarization and soil steaming. Now soil solarization, as we all know, I think I don't need to explain this one. Soil steaming, how it is uh, done, uh, we will just see in the next slide. Here, mechanically, the plastic sheet is laid on the field and so <clears throat> soil solarization destroys the pathogens. S and also even wheat seeds are destroyed by this soil solarization. 
then this is the soil steaming, which is considered to be a very expensive method of uh, treatment. But in advanced countries, people use this for their cultivation of crops. Now, positive aspects of seed heat treatment. By seed heat treatment, the crop is protected against disease from the initial stage without polluting the environment. The crop stand is good and the yield also is good. And in contrast, if infection initiated at seed stage, the growth is adversely affected by the disease and the yield is reduced in huge amount. So seed heat treatment when followed by trichoderma application, the protection against the disease is further extended and the growth and vigor of the plant is also enhanced. So I think this is, even if I don't elaborate, you under, understood because trichoderma is a living organism. It continue to uh, continue to colonize in the, in the soil, in the rhizospheric region and help in decomposing the organic matter, making the nutrients available to the roots for absorption and for better growth of the plants. So, <clears throat> and at the same time, it also uh, controls the soil bond that is many. Now, welcome to integrated management of ginger dry rot. Actually, this is the one which uh, I'm emphasizing. Uh, this is the, the symptom of dry rot of ginger in the field. And, <clears throat> and then we can see even the growth of the mycelium of the pathogen. Fusarium, Oxysporum, uh, Homa especially Zinderberry. This is the advanced uh, rotted one, and this is the initial stage. Now, if we look at the infection starts from the eye, from the butt. So, or if there is an injury from there, the disease starts and it enters inside. And so it causes the dry rot. Now, <clears throat> introduction to a little bit about ginger. India is the second largest producer of ginger in the world after China. Uh, someone say that this year, 2019-20, uh, India was the highest producer of ginger. But this uh, information was collected a little earlier. And that is why I'm just showing this figure here. The country's ginger production during 2018-19 stood at 8 lakhs. 85,350 tons from 1,7550 hectares with a productivity of 8.23 tons per hectare. So this data was provided by Agricultural Production and Export Development Authority, not authority agency. Rhizome growth is a major constraint in ginger cultivation worldwide. Now, some of the uh, constraints I have shown here Soft rot is a major constraint. Another one is the dry rot. Then another one is wilt by bacteria. Uh, Ralstonia solana serum that caused the wilt of uh, ginger. And then another one, stem and shoot borer. This is a pest the problem. But since this also caused a major uh, problem during my research, so I am just shown here. This is the seed rhizomes collected. Now, the steps involved in integrated uh, disease management of dry, uh, ginger dry rot. First is the sorting of ginger rhizomes. Then second is the hot water treatment, followed by trichoderma treatment, then mulching with green leaves, and then placement of lantern twigs in between the rows of ginger plants. <coughs> So simply showing here the sorting of ginger rhizomes, separating the damage and then the disease parts and then selecting the good ones. After selecting the good ones, they are cut into planting size. That is uh, 25 to uh, 30 grams per piece. And, and uh, every piece contain at least one but or one eye. So after that, we go for hot water treatment. <clears throat> this is how, in the absence of big size uh, hot water bath, we use like this, using a thermometer and uh, 
initially the water was heated to 35 to 37 degrees centigrade and then one bucket of hot water one bucket of cold water also was kept uh, side by side to maintain that 51 degrees centigrade because the requirement is 51 degrees centigrade uh, exposing for 10 minutes that is sufficient for destroying the uh, dry rot ginger pathogen which uh, may be present inside the rhizome and so one person is holding the thermometer or one person is holding cold water and uh, hot water to uh, to maintain that temperature but now since hot water bath is also available in some countries even in india also it may be available but till now i do not know but we also can tell the people who uh, made this uh, hot water bath we can make ask them to prepare a big one for farmers for seed treat purpose especially like ginger and turmeric now this is the trichoderma viridi pure culture and this is the Fusura moxisphora from a specialist in the berry, pure culture. When dual culture is uh, done, it is like this. Trichoderma is advancing towards Fusurium and it will completely uh, overgrown this. And at this region, in the uh, interaction region, if we prepared slides, we will see that um, Trichoderma will uh, colonize, will parasitized by coiling around the vegetative fibre of fusurium. This is how the trichoderma treatment is done in a big pot like this. Uh, depending on the quantity of ginger rhizomes to be treated, the water is prepared. Like uh, 10 gram of the trichoderma talcum powder formulation is put in one liter water. So at that rate, this trichoderma is used for treating the rhizomes. So depending on the quantity of rhizomes to be treated, water can be estimated and trichoderma formulation can be added and mixed accordingly. So in, the, uh, in that mixture, ginger rhizome is immersed for 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, we take it out and then shed dry it because since it contains living cells, so we should not expose it in the sun for drying. It has to be, the drying is to be done in the shade. So after 24 hours of drying in that way, ginger rhizomes are ready for planting in the field. So in the field, uh, the rhizomes are planted like this. We see the rhizome pieces here. And then in each pit after uh, the rhizome is placed, uh, one handful of uh, farmyard manure is put covering the rhizome and after that uh, this soil also may be used for covering a thin layer of soil also may be used above the uh, farmyard manure which we, we put. After that we can put the mulching material Mulching material, maybe straw, maybe uh, thatch grass, or maybe uh, uh, weeds, green leafy materials, we use that. <coughs> now, if we see the field here, <coughs> the picture, right hand side is the mulch one and treated one. The, the other side, this is non so <clears throat> the growth is uh, almost similar, but in the in this picture, if you see the treated one here, the number of stems, the number of shoots are more, number of tillers are more compared to the number of um, stems or shoots developed. And at the same time, the number of rhizomes germinated is much better in the treated one compared to the non-treated one. So this is the non-treated field. You can see uh, so many patches without ginger. Um, empty spaces you can see here. This is the non-treated field. But if we look at the treated one, 
here the number of shoots also much more and then also the filling of the field the uh, what i mean is uh, the percentage of sprouting percentage of germination was much better in the treated one now here i'm just comparing the rhizomes collected from the non-treated one and also from the treated one now uh, three clams each from each uh, plot there is treated one and non-treated one i'm just showing here so in the treated one uh, the rhizomes is much more healthy much bigger and even though uh, the health of the plant is much better compared to the non-treated one here on the right hand side is the treated one so it is almost double and i'm sorry to say that whether i have taken the weight or not I don't remember. This was taken during 2013. Uh, the picture was taken during 2013. And so this is the, with the scale, this is the treated one. And then the other one is the non-treated one. Now, if you see the table here, this is um, the two years data which I've collected. Improved method. Now, the treatment method here, sorting plus hot water treatment plus trichoderma viridi treatment plus mulching plus lanthanide camera. So the other one, the traditional method, no special treatment. So here, if we see the percentage of sprouting germination is 96.01. This is the average of two years. And then average disease incidence is 10.84. Then number of uh, stem borer. Uh, it is in terms of clamp. If one stem is affected in one clamp, that is considered as one. Uh, even if two, three number of uh, stems in a clamp are affected, that is considered as one. So 18 number of clamps are being affected. But if we see here, uh, the germination 43.27 and then 26.1 here, average disease incidence, and then the stem borer incidence, uh, 30, 314 number of clams are being affected. So uh, here, when ginger is um, at three to four leaves stage, the ginger will be approximately one, one feet in height, <clears throat> maybe reaching about one feet in height. At that time, the moths of uh, the moths used to visit the plants, and then they lay eggs, and then shoot borer problem starts from there. So, if we place this uh, pungent leaf of lantana camera in between the rows of ginger, then the moth is repelled by that uh, action. And so uh, the number of shoot borer, the number of stem borer is reduced to a great extent. Now, if we see the average yield, uh, out of 100 kg planted, 961.73, and then 415.53. This is the treated and non-treated one in this way the yield also so much difference is there so uh, in that in this way it is very good in case of hot water treated with trichoderma application giving a very good result in case of this uh, shoot i mean the ginger dry rot now in this case i have not used any chemical at no stage i have used chemical so chemical free so dry rot of ginger could be managed with this method without use of any chemical so that is under organic condition organic cultivation the method is very very good now i wanted to show the work of one msc student uh, just the table only here the treatment he has done he has considered like this uh, t0 no treatment so it is control T1, hot water treatment, followed by pathogen inoculation. Here, there was a complete destruction of the rhizome because hot water treatment was followed by 
pathogen inoculation of the rhizomes. Now, T2, hot water treatment of pathogen inoculated rhizomes, followed by trichoderma viridi treatment. This uh, rhizomes were uh, hot, water, hot water treated and then uh, followed by trichoderma viridi treatment. Okay. Before, uh, okay, before hot water treatment was given, one week before hot water treatment was given, uh, the rhizomes were inoculated with the pathogen. Now, after one week, hot water treatment was given, followed by uh, trichoderma viridi. We thought that pathogen will colonize or establish well during that one week period. And so we have inoculated the pathogen. Then after one week uh, of inoculation of the pathogen, we have done hot water treatment followed by uh, trichoderma viridi treatment. So this has given a very good effect. We will see the table. Okay, then another one, T3, hot water treatment of pathogen inoculated seed rhizomes and no further treatment, no trichoderma treatment. Now, T4, trichoderma viridi treatment of pathogen inoculated seed rhizome. So, the pathogen was inoculated on the rhizomes. Then that was followed by inoculation of trichoderma without hot water treatment. Then T5, uh, bevestine treatment was given. This was for check. So, uh, since we dealt with the dry rot of ginger, so we use uh, by the steam. Dry rot of ginger caused by fusion. Now, let us see the uh, sprouting or germin germination percentage. So, T0 control 66.7%. Then T1 completely destroyed, so no germination. And then T2 77.9. In spite of uh, pathogen inoculated, but uh, followed by hot water treatment and trichoderma treatment, the pathogen impact, pathogen effect was uh, uh, neutralized by hot water treatment and uh, trichoderma treatment. Okay, so T3 here, 75%, then T4, 70.7%, then T5, 85. So uh, this bevesting was found to be very effective against Fusogram, so percentage was this much. This is the table. <clears throat> now T2 is given the second highest uh, disease control, disease, in, disease uh, suppression. Uh, if we see T5, this is the baddest thing. So uh, the disease incidence after this was at uh, 210 days after sowing. So starting from 45 days after sowing up to this. So this was the result obtained. So this also indicating that <coughs> hot water treatment and uh, trichoderma treatment yielded a very positive result. Now benefits of heat treatment of seeds. Both externally and internally seed-borne pathogens are removed without environmental pollution. Then the mental and physical health of the consumers is protected as the method is eco-friendly. <laughs> so this sounds very funny, but <clears throat> uh, without, uh, because no chemical is used or no tension. Okay. Now, another uh, positive aspect of heat treatment is Uniform sprouting of the rhizome is obtained by heat treatment. This is also one very good aspect of heat treatment of uh, rhizomes, ginger rhizomes, because when hot water treatment is not given, some seed will germinate after 15 days or 20 days, and then some will uh, germinate uh, maybe even after 45 days like that. So there is no uh, uniform germination, but when hot water treatment is given, uniform sprouting, uniform germination is obtained. So there is a good aspect. The Department of Biotechnology, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India is, New Delhi is gratefully acknowledged 
for funding the project. So in this project, uh, Professor N. Kamerin Aung is the core uh, principal investigator. So with this one, once again, uh, I want to thank you with another cup of ginger. <laughs> so thank you so much for this time. Dear viewers, we have heard very, very practically oriented uh, this experience talk from Dr. L. Dio. It is really very entertaining and also informative. And with respect to organic agriculture, definitely his uh, results can go for recommendation. It is really needed, very effective. We know thing is believing. What he has projected, really, it is very much convincing. So, dear Dr. Dio, so we have received some question and uh, question session also. Will it start from yes, our first? Yes. Uh, yes, can, yes. Can you open your question and answer? You just we have received one from uh, Sasaki Ran and another from uh, Devanushi Dasta. So, can you see the questions? Um, now, when I click this uh, thing, uh, is there any impact of heat treatment in germination of seed? So, this is the only one I see. This okay. was from Devanush Datta. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, this one, any impact of seed, uh, heat treatment in the germination of seed, yeah. So uh, in the first slide or second slide, I don't remember, it was given that uh, strict temperature and time that is to be exposed is to be strictly followed. And so uh, when there is hot water bath, <clears throat> time and uh, temperature required for killing the pathogen is to be main, strictly maintained. So even for hot water treatment of ginger rhizomes, that 51 degrees centigrade is to be maintained for if we are to expose for uh, 10 minutes. So beyond 10 minutes, suppose if we cross that limit, then there is a possibility of affecting the germinability of the seed. But if we strictly followed what has been recommended because that is recommended after uh, lots of trial and errors method is been conducted. After that only recommendation is given. So whoever has recommended the method, uh, if it is strictly followed, then the seed uh, health should not be affected. But if that heat is not reaching the required heat, then it may not affect the pathogen. It may not destroy the pathogen. In that case, uh, our heating will not have uh, any impact on the pathogen. So that is important. Okay, may I know where you... Yeah. This one, may I know where, how you test the pathogen through preparing seed plot technique. This, uh, when uh, ginger was collected, like uh, from all the seven states, at that time Sikkim was not uh, considered. So in 2002, if I remember correctly, um, we collected ginger rhizomes from all the uh, northeastern states, seven states, for uh, determining whether there is any resistant variety available, screening. So for that, we prepared the mass culture of the pathogen, Pythium fusarium. Uh, we prepared mass culture and then the seeds were, I mean the beds were inoculated with uh, uh, rhizome pieces of ginger to make a sick bed 
and then we have planted the ginger. So not even a single variety was found to be resistant against Pythium, against Fusarium. So uh, that was the result we have obtained. So in order to make the sick bad, we have to make the mass culture of the pathogen and we have to inoculate it. Um, seven days or 10 days ahead of planting the ginger rhizomes. Another last question is Vigashali, Dr. Vigashali. Yeah. Hot water treatment incorporated with essential oils, lemon grass, or more. This I have not yet done. This we have not carried out, so I will not be in a position to answer. This essential oil, like lemon grass, while we have not tried. No, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, another question from Eluru Mohan Babu. Yeah. Is there any biochemical changes? Uh, can I see the question? Yeah, last you just drag down. Uh, what is the question? Question Elurum Han Babu is asking is, uh, sir, is there any biochemical changes? Means definitely because of hot water treatment, whether any biochemical changes taking place. Oh, that has not been tested. We have not carried out any experiment to determine that. Thank you. So another question from uh, uh, Harshada Akshay. Why only hot water treated ginger are destroyed? Uh, can you please repeat? Why only hot water treated ginger are destroyed? Because uh, I mean, uh, water hot water treated. I think the question okay. is why I think it is. but inoculated. Mm. I think this question is not uh, proper. Not proper. No, uh, maybe the person is asking. Uh, in one student's work, I have shown that there was no germination at all after hot water. I mean, uh, after the pathogen was inoculated. When after hot water treatment was given, so um, uh, we understand that even the rhizomes, they may be having some uh, self-defense or immune system in itself against the pathogens. But when that is destroyed by hot water treatment, and when the pathogen is inoculated, there is no defense mechanism. Uh, there is no uh, useful microorganisms to protect, to strengthen the rhizome, but now it has been made helpless to defend itself after hot water treatment is given. So when the pathogen is inoculated, it is completely destroyed. It could not withstand the impact of the pathogen. So it was completely destroyed. That, I think, this person must be asking that one. Uh, and another question, uh, this is anonymous, attendee's name is not displaying. He's yeah. a, what is the importance of lantana? This lantana, as I have said, it is, if you just take the leaf and crush it, it gives a very pungent smell. And even if uh, just at the time of plucking the leaf, you, you will uh, pluck in the twigs, you will uh, sense the presence of the volatile substance which is very pungent. And that uh, pungency expelled, repel the moth, which is visiting the ginger plants. And so uh, when it is repelled, it, is, it go away, so it could not lay the eggs on the ginger plants. And because of that, the uh, shoot 
borer or stem borer is uh, avoided by use of that lantana camera. And that lantana also, after decomposition, is it adds to the soil fertility, and so the ginger grow, grow good. good. I hope uh, it is answered. Uh, one more question uh, asked by yes. Akshay. Last question, yes. okay. So, uh, if only hot water treatment destroys ginger and trichoderma, plus hot water treatment give good results, then why not only give trichoderma? Means why trichoderma alone cannot provide the better results? No, I, I just uh, have mentioned at the uh, initial part that trichoderma is not a good competitor with other microorganisms. So when ginger is not treated with hot water, so many other microorganisms also remain there, uh, dwelling on the rhizome system. So when trichoderma is just added, uh, inoculated, uh, it doesn't give a much impact on protecting the, uh, uh, the rhizome against the pathogen. But when hot water treatment is given, the whatever microorganisms are present on the rhizome, uh, those are destroyed and trichoderma is given free hand to colonize in that hot water treated uh, surface. And so trichoderma treated one does much better in protecting the uh, seed and also gives uh, uh, kind of growth promoting substances are released and even helping decomposition of the organic material and release the nutrients like carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus and all. And the plants are able to get more nutrients and grow better. Okay, thank you. So uh, from my side, one question, Dr. Dio. Yes, yes. So uh, here we have seen very commonly, we have seen in uh, under our northeastern region in Dinzar, this is the uh, most problem is coming from soft rot, dry rot, and also wilt. Yes. But in your, this presentation, you have mostly covered that is the management of dry rot disease caused by yes. Ginger, Ginger yes, 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 yes. But uh, whether your hot treatment, uh, uh, hot water treatment will be effective for soft rot as well as uh, this uh, wilt? Yes. This dry rot of uh, ginger, I mean, uh, wilt, wilt disease management was started by uh, Dr. A. Kumar. I think he is there in ARI, IRI. He was the main person from whom I got this idea of uh, hot water treatment. So in order to manage this, uh, uh, Nematode, dry rot, and wilt caused by Ralph Luna Solana serum. This hot water treatment was introduced by him. I, I don't know before him whether such uh, treatment was recommended or not. But when I visited him at Calicut, uh, when I was starting my project, I was asked to visit by the task force members. I was asked to visit, so I interacted with him and from him I came to know this. So with hot water treatment, uh, wilt of ginger could be effectively managed. Yes. And then uh, PTM, uh, in the laboratory condition, we have seen that uh, PTM also could be antagonized by uh, trichoderma, trichoderma versianum. Uh, Trichoderma viridi, I have not uh, seen, but uh, in the field condition, we have not tried against uh, PTM because this fusarium was easier because in the laboratory, uh, so much inhibition could cause, and we could observe that, and that's why it was uh, uh, implemented, and then we have observed the result, very good result. So in the coming days, younger generation, more people can come forward uh, for trying with soft rot pathogen also. PTM afanidermatum and PTM areotalum. These are the two major pathogens uh, occurring in the high altitude. And at Mezipema, 
it comes uh, along with uh, dry rot pathogen also. Now, what I wanted to mention is whether heat treatment is given uh, for uh, cereal seeds or whatever seed is uh, given, hot, I mean, uh, heat treatment is given. Trichoderma, if it is incorporated, it will give much better result instead of just simply uh, heat treatment given to the seeds or planting material or soil solarization or soil skimming. If trichoderma is applied in that heat treated one, uh, the result will be much better. That is what I wanted to uh, emphasize here. So, thank you very much, Dr. Dayo. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Very nice talk. I yeah, hope okay. I also enjoyed his uh, the delivery. So, uh, is there time uh, for a vote of thanks? For that, I just uh, would like to inform you that our today's speaker will be uh, this uh, honored with uh, uh, one appreciation certificate. So that okay. will be in the later on. Okay. So, Thank you. Uh, for a formal vote of thanks, I request Dr. Susanta Bonnik, is the general counselor, uh, to place the proper uh, this formal vote of thanks. Yes, Susanta. Okay. Thank you very much, sir, for giving me time. It is my privilege to present word of thanks formally. First of all, uh, on behalf of IPS, uh, let me thank Professor L. Daiho for kindly accepting our request to present his long practical experiences on plant disease management in spices, uh, especially ginger. Thank you very much for sharing your valuable time and experience with us today. I also take the privilege of thanking and congratulating the present highly qualified team of IPS office bearers, the president, Dr. P.K. Chakravarti, secretary, Dr. Rabin Gogoi, joint secretary, Dr. K.K. Mandal, and the treasurer for taking the IPS to newer height by organizing a series of webinars in this pandemic time. I also express my sincere thanks to all the attendees of this webinar for kindly being with us today. Thank you one and all, stay safe. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Bye, bye.